Hi, welcome to Word for Winners. I'm Tom Anderson, and my lovely wife is not here today. She is doing a conference somewhere in Scottsdale, Arizona. But I wanted to make sure I had some time with you and as family, and I thought I would like to teach something that perhaps you have never heard before. This is really dealing with a book that I'm writing concerning uh, our Father who art in heaven or uh, the Lord's Prayer. And just looking at the word Father, we just finished up doing a, a series on the names of God. And Father is directly associated with the word Yod, Y-O-D, which is the 10th letter in the ancient Hebrew or in modern Hebrew. And it really deals with a 10th or the tree of life or Christ Jesus who God sent to this earth as he sent his tie that still every time someone gets born again, receives Christ as Lord and Savior, they are, there is a, a reciprocal response to God for uh, his goodness that he sowed into us. And we again are brought into a right relationship with Father God through Christ Jesus. And so I want to talk a little bit about the tree of life. We know that the tree of life was actually present in the garden. And uh, we know that it was the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we know that Adam and Eve made a bad choice and they chose the natural lifestyle, which actually ended up into the world of natural or Satan's kingdom, which is a corruptible seed. But God sent Christ Jesus to us as an incorruptible seed. So once we receive Christ, the seed that is in us is incorruptible. And we're going to go into a lot of detail in this. So if you can hang on and listen, I think you'll learn a tremendous amount today just about grasping and understanding more about the tree of life, Christ Jesus. First of all, it's probably most important that in the beginning God created heaven and earth, and we know that he said, let there be light. We know that the Holy Spirit was there uh, hovering on the absence of everything, waiting for the word of God to be spoken. Christ Jesus is the word of God, and nothing was made except it was made by the word. So I'm going to read that just quickly out of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's Christ Jesus. And he was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. And in him was life and the life and the light of men. So it's really important to grasp. This is the tree of life. He was there in the very beginning. He was the makeup and part of the creation process. God spoke. He spoke the word. He spoke Jesus. He spoke the word, became flesh. He spoke it out. And as he spoke it out, the Holy Spirit then, who was hovering, went about producing all that it is seen from what was not seen. Hebrews tells us that. I don't really spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to spend time understanding the 10 energies that uh, speak of the tree of life. This is uh, from a lot of ancient writings. This is from sages 3,500 years before Solomon. So a lot of this is real interesting, uh, um, important for us to grasp the full meaning of Father or Father God or Yod. And these 10 energies that describe or are part of uh, Christ Jesus or the Word or the Tree of Life are very important for us to grasp and understand. So I'm going to start with uh, the tenth, which is the crown power of grace. We are just finally seem like uh, revelations coming to the body of Christ concerning grace. In fact, the power of grace is the crown power of Christ Jesus. And it reigns from the tree down to us at salvation. It was this grace that was sent to us. We are saved by faith through grace or by grace through faith. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. So we're brought into the kingdom with grace. Unfortunately, so often we get taught so much about religion and so much about rules and regulations that we lose sight of what Christ did for us. When we got born again uh, through the process of forgiveness, we understand that 
Christ paid for our past, present, and future sin. And as a result of that, we are fully qualified 24-7 for all of the promises of God. Yet there are certain things that we have to understand about grace that Titus tells us uh, that grace will teach us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. So uh, grace is a power and a source that affects our eternity, but then it also has the power to affect our life here on earth. And when we follow the word, Christ Jesus, through the power of grace, we actually li can live, uh, John chapter 10, we can live life and life more abundant. So this is the, really the process of grasping grace. So let me read to you the way it is written, uh, number 10 of these energies that are contained in the word of God and contained in the tree of life. The crown power of grace is the undifferentiated potential, unlimited potential. In other words, this power that has been given to the Word, sown into the Word in Christ Jesus, virtually holds the universe together. In other words, when God said, let there be light, there was power in the words to such a degree that the entire universe, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse uh, 2 and 3, said that the power of God actually holds the universe together, or the Word of God spoken. Uh, in fact, it says in Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, that's through the Word, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom, we all, whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the Word of his power. I don't know if we could ever grasp the power of the word that God invested into his spoken word and how it can impact and affect life and life more abundant. So it's the undifferentiated potential, unlimited power, a blazing light, and an intelligence that sends all of the energy of God and light into the tree of life, Christ Jesus, the word of God. How critical and power do we we need to grasp and understand the power that God invested in what he said. That's why there's so much power in the confession of God's word. And please, if you haven't seen the program before, you can go uh, and look at us on, on YouTube and find out more about The Word for Winners or Maureen Anderson TV or, or uh, Dr. C. Thomas Anderson. You can find out more information by listening to a full series that we've talked about. But grasping this one premise, power in the Word of God, and why the power for us humans to speak God's Word to change and affect our tomorrows is so powerful. And of course, that's connected to faith, which is what Jesus said when the disciples asked him, what is the works of God? They said, believe in him whom he sent. So our faith is connected to the Word. The Word contains such power or the faith of God that we can impact and change anything in our lives concerning healing, concerning finance, concerning every area of your life is impacted or can be impacted by the positive confession of God's word. So let's take a look at number two or number nine, because I'm going backwards here. Number nine is something that deals with a series that I'm working on right now, uh, preaching on Sunday mornings. And uh, it, is, it, it is the wisdom of God. A lot of people pray for the wisdom of God. When they pray for the wisdom of God, they don't actually know what wisdom is, so it's very difficult for them to grasp what wisdom is. If you don't know what it is, how would you know if you have it? First of all, it's very important to grasp that there is absolutely no wisdom in the world. This is really critical for us to grasp. When God said, let there be light, and then in chapter 2 of Genesis, he said he breathed, that's CPR, the breath of life, breath of life, means that he gave them order, listen closely, reason, love, intelligence, and enlightenment. Now these were given to man to live on earth and be able to survive the elements of life. Tend and keep the garden was God's directive. Now, 
There's four in particular. There's natural love, there's natural order, there's natural reason, there's natural intelligence. All of those were very important for man to have. At this point in time, they were not corruptible because they hadn't made a negative decision. And as a result of not making a negative decision, they, they uh, were still living in that goodness. Now, God walked with them because God was not in them yet. And that took place because of born again so that we are forgiven from Adam's sin and God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus can inhabit us or live in us in a born again scenario. So let's go back and look at Adam and Eve. When they chose the tree of good and evil in the garden, those natural attributes became corruptible. They were incorruptible, but suddenly they became corruptible. So you can see that order in the world today, you can see that reason in the world today, intelligence in the world today, natural love in the world today has become corrupted to such a degree that there's not much power in any of them. We're seeing marriages fail. We're seeing intelligence has gone to intellectualism, has lost the ability of problem solving. We've, we've gone so far away from order and so far away from natural reason. But God sent Christ Jesus to the earth to give us once again dominion and authority back when he raised his firstborn from the grave so that we would have in us an incorruptible seed and we would begin to develop the wisdom of God. There is no wisdom in the world system. There is only intelligence turned to intellect, the inability to solve problems, the only ability to identify problems, and we're seeing that on a worldwide level today. This is why it's so critical today to no longer be led by this natural attributes. Your natural love will never keep your marriage together. You've got to receive the unconditional love of God that lives in you and get it through your soulish realm and bring it into your work through your quicken your mortal body with unconditional love for mankind, unconditional love will overcome all things. It never fails, but getting people to operate in it is a whole new process. That's why the Bible talks about renewing our mind and not living by our old natural man's emotions or our natural thinking. We've got to get a kind of the mind of Christ. We've got to develop the intelligence and the wisdom of God. We've got to start to operate and walk by the Spirit rather than by the natural flesh because the natural flesh continues to be corruptible. But God wants us to live by the incorruptible seed of Christ Jesus. I'm going to spend some time in the next few weeks dealing with just dealing with wisdom in itself. But let me just take a look at uh, what, the way this reads, wisdom above and beyond human reason or natural wisdom. This is what Proverbs says, wisdom is the principal thing that we should get. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all of your getting, get, this is the critical, and been really a quest that I've had most of my born-again life is to find understanding. Get understanding, exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor, and when you embrace her, she will place on your head an ornament, there's that power of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Wisdom, wisdom, and the power of wisdom is God's plan for us to live our life here on this earth. It is not connected to any aspect of the world. It's beyond human comprehension. It is something that has to be received by the Spirit. So when people pray for wisdom, they don't really have a grasp or an understanding what the wisdom of God is. And we can find great interest and great information by going back and looking at Solomon, who God came to and said, if there was something you need or want, what is it that I could give you? And Solomon said, give me an understanding heart. This translates as wisdom, an understanding heart. Well, as a result of gaining an understanding heart from God, from the Word of God, he developed the greatest wealth and wisdom and the greatest amount of wealth in secular or Christian mentality of prosperity in all of history. 
So there's something so connected to the wisdom of God that we have to have in order to develop the kind of wealth, the kind of joy, the kind of life, and life more abundant that comes from the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is related to five particular things. I'll just name them. I'm going to eventually teach a great deal about them. But the first one is proper use of a resource, understanding the power of tithe, understanding sowing into the kingdom, understanding sowing into the earth. There's so much concerning how investment has the power to increase. The second one is having an, uh, an ability to discern good and evil, right and wrong, light and dark. The third one, and just basically quickly saying, is perce perceiving. Perceiving has everything to do with the ability to submit to the Word. If you wanted to get healing in your body, you have to submit to the Word of God by His stripes, you are healed. You can't live by the natural part of it. You have to live by the spiritual part or by submitting to the Word of God. It actually means to submit to a higher power. Fourth one is, uh, uh, is concerning. Concerning is making sure that you understand that your actions on this earth should benefit others. Everything that you do should benefit others or all of your actions on this earth is what concerning means. And the last one is giving. So you have those five aspects which are connected to the wisdom of God. And so seeking wisdom is critical. I like to look at it this way, that we start out with knowledge and we learn something about the Word, but until we understand the Word, we can't act on the Word. And you can't act on, when you act on the Word, you act in the wisdom of God. That's the best way I can explain it. Knowledge, but it has to become understanding, and that's why I like to teach like I teach, to bring you understanding to Scripture. When you understand what God is trying to say, then you can begin to do what God says. You can tell a child, don't run out into the street, but until he understands that he could be hit by a car, until he has full understanding, he'll continue to run into the street. So we have to bring understanding to children, not just knowledge, but understanding so they can begin to act in wisdom. Okay, well, let's take number eight and move on to that. Number eight is understanding the Holy Spirit. This is the next step in the power of the tree of life. The tree of life will always lead us. First of all, it is the Word, and the Holy Spirit will always lead you to the Word. It's put this way in John chapter 16, that the helper or the counselor or the Holy Spirit, or I like to think of the Holy Spirit as God's thoughts, attitudes, and intentions for us, that He is always leading us to what Jesus said, and Jesus said, I only say what I heard my father say. So they're all on the same wavelength. They're all connected to the same frequency. They're all connected one, or you can say Trinity, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. However you want to teach that, it doesn't matter. They are all on the same page. They're all operating by what God said. And he spoke all good. He always spoke increase. He always spoke love. He always spoke his goodness to us. Any other attitude that you have developed is a religious attitude when you think God has bad in store for you if you don't do this, if you don't do that, if you don't do this. No, no, no. God's intentions have always been good. The garden was perfect. We have been placed back in the garden under the second Adam. His intentions for us are continuously good. They are never connected to kill, steal, or destroy. That is what the enemy does. God came through Christ Jesus with the Holy Spirit to give us life and life more abundant. You can read that in John chapter 10 and verse 10. So look at that, if you will. And so when you're understanding the Holy Spirit, this is a little bit hard for the, the body of Christ and religion to grasp and understand. I, I'm going to try and say it the best I can. We have Father God, but he promotes family. In other words, male and female were to come together in marriage and produce and be fruitful, fill the earth with children and children's children's children so that we might leave an inheritance for our children's children. So. His plan was father, mother, and child. Now, 
in order for that to be the promotion, we have to understand that Father God is the male part. Jesus is the son, or if you will, the life and the light of this earth, which would be men, male and female, because they're all made in his likeness and image. And then we understand that the Holy Spirit is the feminine side of God. If you research it at all in Strong's or any of your concordances, you'll always find this connection. Just as we read in Proverbs, she will exalt you. She will draw you into the fullness. She will teach you wisdom. She will give you understanding. And she will give you the crown of grace. So we have to understand we have male, female, and children. That's the picture of family. That is the answer to world issues dealing with abortion, dealing with all sorts of things. The greatest harm of abortion, greatest harm, and I'm just going to be honest with you, the greatest harm is that you cut off generations that God had planned from the foundation of time. There's a, there's a it becomes terminated. There is no children's children's children. There's no inheritance that goes on. What God planned from the foundation of time, the child, he knew you while you were in your mother's womb. He hand formed you in your mother's womb. And so when you grasp and understand that that was a planned generation or who knows how many presidents might have been in that bloodline, how many lives would have been changed by generation after generation. We just don't know because now it's been terminated. That's the greatest danger from the future that God has for the earth and for his kingdom. So that's what is the worst. Obviously, it's also murder and, and it's never in God's plan. God does not kill, steal, or destroy. Only the devil kills, steals, and destroy. So we have to understand that. People that might be condemned by what I just said because you've had an abortion, the Bible says, ask for forgiveness. God forgives and forgets. So all you need to do is forgive yourself and forget because a child's in the presence of God, healthy and whole and waiting on you for the next realm or the next thousand years. So that's all in your future. I don't want you to be condemned. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So when we look at the Holy Spirit, it is really talking to us about understanding and enlightenment. Now, when I talked about the four parts of the nature of man and the corruptible seed, there was one that's not, and that is he gave them enlightenment in the garden. The enlightenment means that they had the ability to go eat of the tree of life and seek the wisdom of God but they did not. Enlightenment is something that's in every person. The some that are sitting out today don't know anything about Christ Jesus. I'm not born again. I know you're just watching the program, but I want you to understand salvation was provided for you to change your destiny from darkness to light, to put you in a position where you could be led by the wisdom of God and not led by the nature of man, which seems to lead just think about overeating the food you've been eating. It leads to death. It, it, all of the aspects of the corruptible seed can take you towards death, but the incorruptible seed of Christ Jesus can take you continuously towards life. And we'll give you an opportunity to receive Christ here right at the end of the sermon. The revelation of enlightenment, what God has said and is saying, I think is very important to, to grasp. Now here's part of the Holy Spirit. The feminine or the female here on this earth, wives, they are, in fact, the energy of motivation of production. In other words, I, I, it, it reads this way. It is the motivation and the energy of human endeavor. In other words, wives motivate their husbands to be successful. The Holy Spirit motivates God's bride to be successful. It is an innate nature of a female or a woman to motivate the male for success. If she sends him out to conquer the world, he'll slay the dragon. If she sends him out defeated and put down, and she, she will constantly destroy her own future, because she has impacted and affected him in a negative way, and he's not going out 
to slay the dragon. He's going out to be defeated by the dragon. So it is critical. Women, you have the ability to motivate your husband, to motivate the male to human endeavor. And women have the same thing in them. They want to be successful at what they do, whether it's mothering or whether it's working for a corporation. There's something in each one of us, male and female, that desires to build, not to tear down. And so natural man tears down, spiritual man builds. That's probably the easiest way to grasp and understand. Number eight. There is therefore now, no, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, so there is no, therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. This is the power of understanding the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be the energy and motivation for success in life. He motivates male and female. Number seven, this is the energy of mercy. It is an unrestrained desire to share life. Uh, you have to think about that for a few minutes. Uninterrupted, un, it's, it, it is, listen to what it is, unrestrained desire to share life. And we'll pick it up there next time. But if you have never received Christ Jesus, I want you to have the opportunity right now. I want you to pray this prayer with me. And uh, you can receive Christ. God wishes that none should perish. You can enter into the spiritual life that we've been talking about and leave so much of the natural. You're not going to be perfect and you're going to still mess up. Don't, don't worry about that. But it's about what God has His hand on your life and can direct you into life and life more abundantly. He can direct you into prosperity, direct you into health, direct you into joy, peace, and highly favored good things that God has for you. Pray this prayer with me. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin and ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, let us know there's a phone number on the bottom, but also continue watching. We're gonna talk, continue on with this because there's so much content here that is important for you to grasp, but God covers every issue in Father God that we're dealing with here on this earth today so much. So stay tuned. Thanks for being with the family. Share something with somebody. Tell them they received Jesus today. God bless you. Becoming a millionaire God's way shows you the perfect plan for wealth in your life and comes directly from God's word. This book is about getting money to you, not from you. Thousands of people have used the principles in becoming a millionaire God's way to see real financial change in their lives. You can become a master of money and step into a life of generosity and freedom. Becoming a Millionaire God's Way, Dr. Tom Anderson's bestseller. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.